Hello, Pirate family, and welcome to the weekly update for August 31st of 2023. And we're just about wrapping up the first full week of school, four days, three and a half to be exact. Uh, so I just wanted to utilize the video tools that we have to, to, to speak with you personally, um, talk about this past week, but more importantly, talk a little bit about the school year, some focus points, both from an academic standpoint and from a, uh, a student well-being standpoint, and just some some challenges that we, we worked through last year, and we want to get out in front of things and really just make sure we strengthen our partnership with our parents. And this is one way that uh, I like to share information so I can provide a little more context, but also build that trust, build uh, just more of, of familiarity with, my, with myself and with the district. So uh, appreciate the time. Often these do take a little more time than I'm sure uh, we'd like to spend uh, getting information from the school. But the video format provides you the flexibility to, to listen at your convenience, to pause, to watch it in chunks if you need to do so. But I really do encourage you to listen through it in its entirety, especially the, the second half of this, because I'm going to be talking about some challenges that I think are important for everybody to hear. But uh, before we get to that, it's been a great first week. Uh, it's been awesome having your children back in our schools. A lot of smiles, a lot of high fives, fist bumps. Kids generally feel um, glad to be back here in school. Uh, we're very fortunate. Our schools are filled with just adults who love kids, who are excited to have them back, regardless of their role. And uh, we, it's it's been just an, a great part of our professional career to to have them part of our lives once again. So hopefully they've they've come home and share some positive stories. Uh, we understand that school may not be one of their favorite things to participate in, especially when the weather's still nice and they want to hang out at home or on a lake or out and about with their friends. But uh, once again, we're glad that they're here with us, and we're looking forward to having a skate a great school year. Uh, I want to say a special shout out to our transportation department, our food service department. Those are really big lifts um, for both those departments to start transporting our kids safely to school and at home, along with feeding our, our kiddos, especially with the free breakfast at both free meals, both at breakfast and at lunch. But I've been observing every building, um, both our, our transportation uh, processes and our food service processes. And I'm just astounded how quickly um, they have become efficient, getting kids on the buses, getting them to where they need to be, getting our kids in the food lines, getting them fed. And just as credit to the leadership of both those departments, the, the trend of staff they have supporting them. And so uh, we're not there yet. We're still in the process. I'm sure there's still some bumps in the road that we're working through. But uh, once again, appreciate your patience. Uh, appreciate the grace that you've given us and allowing us an opportunity to kind of just um, get through this first week, and I have no doubt that things are going to continue to get better uh, upon returning next Tuesday, uh, but they're, we're already in good shape. And in terms of uh, classrooms, the schools running, um, and from a day-to-day -day standpoint, it's it's almost as the kids have been with us for the last three months. And that, once again, it's a credit to them, to you, to helping them get prepared, uh, to our staff, making them feel comfortable, making them feel welcome, making them feel cared for and loved. That goes a long way in, in having our kids uh, not be so anxious and just uh, trusting us and uh, taking time to learn um, our expectations and, and the norms of of what we expect of them and the process that we have in place. So uh, great first week. We're looking forward to really start hitting the ground running next week. Uh, we've got kind of some of the, the managerial and organizational uh, things out of the way. Uh, we've got a couple more open houses coming for Pathfinder High School, a couple more pitcher days, and, uh, and then we're going to just hit the ground running. So on that note, Let's talk a little bit about um, some of our focus areas for the school year uh, from academics. If you know, going back, uh, you've been with us since 2020, we've been really laser focused on um, being better in our area of literacy, aligning our curriculum, uh, aligning our, our instructional practices uh, for uh, research-based instructional practices. And if you've had kiddos in the K-5 environment, I'm sure you've heard um, the term Orton-Gillingham, and that is a uh, high established, high respected, probably one of the most respected instructional strategies and programs in place for literacy that we were able to, to take advantage of um, because of COVID. Uh, we, it's, it's not a cheap program for not just the materials, but for training. And we utilized our, our ESSER funds, um, aka COVID money, to, to be able to support that. And our teachers and our administrators have been uh, committed to spending a lot of time, months, um, throughout the course and in, in years, to be honest with you, um, learning this practice, um, being committed 100%, everybody's doing it, and we're we're seeing the results of that. And it's it's been, like I said, about three years um, been in place. It's it's a learning process for all of us, but uh, I couldn't be more proud because we've recently uh, been presented with some data, data from last year starting to to come our way. And uh, we recently just uh, received some countywide data that includes Pinkton Community Schools for our PSAT scores. And I want to share with you in just a moment the the eighth grade ELA because eighth grade is a good kind of 
um, benchmark because that's the first year our students start taking a PSAT. And that's kind of where we're starting to see probably some of the results of the that the very important literacy work that we've been engaged with. And so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. If I could just bear with me for a quick second as a, I take a look here. Okay, so what I've got in front of you is the um, the the data chart that I have, the bar graph um, we received from the ISD LESA that contains all the um, five school districts in in Livingston County. And as you can see, Pinckney students um, per this assessment, which is a PSAT, once again, that's a, a kind of a, a preview of the SAT, but there's a lot of good data that we we look at. And um, it, it's it's ac it's data that we, we, we lean on, and it's a good barometer of where our kids are at, and uh, more importantly, where they're going. And for the eighth grade, um, we're extremely proud to share that our, our students scored 80% um, proficiency. And that is just phenomenal. And that's great growth. And I totally attribute that to the hard work of our, our teachers across the board, um, the the commitment that we've had for our literacy. Because as we know, literacy opens the door to not only other curriculums, but to lifelong learning. And so that was why we wanted to make sure that was um, our first major uh, focus point um, for the past three years. And even our students, you see that light bar, which, and it says it's ED, that stands for economically disadvantaged. They performed at a high level as well. And if we take a look at, and I'm not gonna spend time going through every single chart they have, but our ninth grade ELA is is, is good as well. It's, it's 71%, um, definitely making an improvement. Um, but here at eighth grade, not only is it 80%, I'm proud to say that it's the highest within the county, as you can see. And uh, it's taken a lot of hard work, a lot of commitment, a, a, a lot of um, time spent for our teachers and uh, in professional development, but we're seeing this pay off. And we only um, are we're very confident that this is going to continue. And we're going to start seeing this even as our students make their way throughout high school and the SAT scores. And uh, so I just wanted to take a second to, to share that with you. Um, today's the first day that we could. It's been embargoed. We've known this data for a week or two, but we weren't able to share it. But uh, today's the first day that we could do that. So I wanted to take this opportunity. And we should all be very proud and encouraged. And I'm even encouraged because the Orton-Gillingham program is something that we're engaging our preschool teachers in. So if you got a, a kiddo in preschool, a three-year-old preschool, four-year-old preschool, especially an all-day program, they're going to start getting um, the opportunity to start fostering those literacy skills um, using the Orton-Gillingham and the common practices that we use K through five. And uh, it's exciting to think about where they're going to be um, throughout the course of their experience here with us in Pinckney Community Schools. And on that note, um, we do have Another focus area that we're going to be spending time on with our staff, and some of that work has already started, and that's an area of mathematics. Uh, to be honest with you, K K five, our, our math scores and our performance has been pretty strong. We've been pretty aligned um, with math explorations, and the teachers been working um, together for some time in that area. But six twelve, I'll be honest with you, our scores just don't reflect the the quality of teachers we have. It doesn't reflect the hard work that our teachers um, commit to to teaching mathematics instruction. And a lot of that's just alignment. And that's been an area that we know we need to focus on. Um, the, the mistake we often make in education, we focus on too much. And so we don't improve it in any one area. And we were dedicated for literacy and that work's gonna continue and we're gonna continue growing, but we have the systems in place. And now the next focus is math. Um, we have great students and the scores just don't reflect um, the quality of students we have and more importantly, the, the quality of, of teachers we have. So um, we're gonna, we're gonna mimic the the kind of the model that we had in place for literacy, not that there's Orton Gillingham for math, but in terms of alignment, getting us all on the same page, make sure we're focused on uh, best practice and research based best practice across the board. And so we can see the results that really uh, truly reflect uh, the quality of teachers and students that we have in this district. So that is our next area of focus that we're going to continue to work on. Um, the scores aren't horrible by any means. I think when you look at it from a county standpoint, we're about um, third uh, in terms of ranking behind uh, Heartland, Brighton, and then, but we still have work to do. It's, it's not a competition against other schools, it's about our kids and where we can get our kids at. And they definitely, um, we need to get them better than where they're currently at. And so that is uh, an area of focus that we've been very intent on and we're gonna be paying very close attention to and working hard, um, not only this year, but for the years ahead. So those are really two um, areas of focus. We're working across the board, obviously, with all our content areas, but when we're taking that like, laser focus across the board, literacy has been, been that area for the past three years. We're now adding on and transitioning to mathematics. And so I just wanna to let you know that we'll spend more time providing more data. I didn't wanna take a lot of time with the data piece here, but I just wanna highlight um, the area of the ELA, um, eighth grade PSAT, because we're very proud of, of what that data is showing us. So 
On that note, um, there's other areas of focus outside of academics, um, and that's really the well-being of our, ki our kiddos. And, and some may say that's that social emotional learning and emotional well-being. It's all encompassing. It's really just the well-being of our kids. And we know that the well-being of our kids directly impacts their ability to be successful in their classroom. And if you've been in education or been a parent for some time, um, or just, you know, we live in a world that is much different than the world that we grew up in. Heck, it is much different than five years ago, 10 years ago. And we're seeing the changes in our kids. And, and I've talked to educators, been in education for 30, 40 years, and who've been superintendents in the past. And they, they've they stepped back in a role and working in schools. And they said what, what they're seeing and hearing and a challenge of our kids, of our families, is nothing in comparison to what they've experienced 10, 15, 20 years ago. And I don't think that's any big surprise. Um, our kids have been through a lot, especially uh, living through what we've had to live through 2020, but also just the world that our kids are growing up in. And remember, their brains are developing um, each and every day and are developing by what they see, by what they hear, by what they experience. And our kids are growing up in a world that technology is readily available at all times. And it's getting younger and younger where they have access to that. But it's not just the technology. It's um, television, it's video games, it's music, it is just the the social noise that surrounds our kids. And it's not always positive. And, and it, it, it is impacting their ability to, to be able to, to manage their emotions. Um, it seems like our, a lot of our kids are growing up in a constant state of high anxiety, of stress, of fear, sometimes anger. And learning how to recognize your emotions and more importantly, how to to express your emotions appropriately is a skill that takes time. And that's, we call that emotional intelligence. Uh, adults are in the process of doing that. And, and at schools, we're trying to make sure that we're supporting them in all areas because we're seeing behaviors of kids that are very concerning, not just in these schools, I'm just talking kind of nationally, just systemically in education and in the world, that is very concerning. Um, and more specifically, we, it, no big surprise, we've seen an increase across this country and in the state, and we know here, um, you know, close to home, that school threats uh, of kids uh, expressing themselves and, and wanting to hurt other people or even wanting to hurt themselves. And self-harm is, is just as, as concerning for us. And, and we've come to find out that, um, you know, a lot of the kids are expressing um, these really negative thoughts or, or, or like I said, threats to, to hurt other people to, or hurt themselves as a way to um, express what they're feeling inside, whether it's once again, anxiety, um, stress, fear, anger, and, um, and it's something that we have to take very seriously, regardless of why those comments are being made. And we have process in place that I've shared last year. I think it was about February, I did a video to talk about our threat assessment process. And we have an extensive threat assessment process. So whenever any kind of threat is made to um, the school community um, as a whole, we we have a team that includes myself, our resource officer, Deputy uh, Jeremy Gwynn, building administrators, social workers, counselors, um, teachers, anybody that can, can be a resource to that process, we involve. But it always starts with me, I'll be honest. So I'm always directly involved along with uh, Deputy Gwynn and then building administrators. And we use a model that we've been trained in from the Michigan State Police um, that's pretty widely used in the state of Michigan and um, to determine the severity of the threat, the root cause of the threat, because um, really we're trying to get down to, um, you know, what is the validity of the threat and then how do we need to respond from that point. But one thing that I shared last year, and it still holds true, regardless of what comes out of the threat, so threat assessment process, every instance is reported to the Livingston County Prosecutor's Office because there is a legal ramification, um, even if it's a, it's a false threat and, and not a valid threat, those are still significant and they're not appropriate and it can create a lot of chaos, a lot of unnecessary fear and time and energy that's spent. So we report all those and and where those go is really up to the prosecuting attorney's office, but we report each and every, every one of them. And some have gone down that legal um, pathway with le legal ramifications, some have not. So, but we work in partnership with them as well and um, and so it's important for our kids to know that. It's important for our parents to know that, to have follow-up conversations with their kids about making sure that if they're feeling these feelings of anxiety, stress, fear, anger, that th there's ways to communicate to, to you and to us appropriately without going down that path because we can get the help that they need, the support they need, whether it's here at school or it's an outside agency or resource. And so um, but we have to make sure we give our kids the tools and we have to have the, the trust and the relationships for them to feel comfortable talking to us. And hopefully that's the same at home as well. 
any trusted adult is, is an important resource in that process. Um, last year, I'm proud to say that Deputy Gwynn spent um, time in every single classroom. So every student in fifth grade through eighth grade last year had a presentation by him to talk about the, the, the severity of threats and really the process that I just kind of explained to you and, and kind of the ramifications of accountability um, that takes place, but also uh, the reporting to the prosecuting attorney's office in hopes that the more we educate and we're just very open and honest with our kids, the more they'll understand the severity of it. So I, I share this with, not to scare people, it's just a, it's a reality that we're contending with and we have to work in partnership. It's gotta be par parents sharing the message at home, school officials sharing the message at home, making sure we create a healthy culture and climate here where our kids feel comfortable talking to us. And they do, whenever there's been a concern, our kids have always been the first ones coming and sharing information, whether it's a friend saying they wanna hurt themselves or they wanna hurt somebody else. So that's a positive thing, but we want to we want to get to the kids before they get to that point, and uh, and that's that's why we spend a lot of time on, on building a really healthy culture and climate here, taking advantage of our awesome community, the family atmosphere, and just uh, making sure we're transparent with everybody at all times. So um, I appreciate you doing your part at home and 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 really helping us work through that. I'm hoping that last year was an anomaly in what we experienced throughout this country and that we can make progress we continue to help support our kiddos and our families in a positive way and that we're gonna we're gonna minimize if not eliminate those things from happening so um what one another important aspect i want to talk about that we've seen a rise in it's really just started kind of ticking up last year and it's not a lot but i think it's it warrants a conversation because one instance is, is too many of any of these and i think the more we can talk honestly about it the more we can kind of get in front of it and be proactive and, and work together in partnership. And that's that's situations where we're seeing just an increase of our kids um, using language and towards each other. Uh, it's really towards students, talking to, st to other students that unfortunately can be characterized as being racist in nature at times, um, vulgar, and just extremely inappropriate. Um, the, the lack of filter we're seeing with kids and an understanding the, the seriousness of the words they use uh, towards each other um, has diminished, it seems like. And I, I think we can probably see the world around us is that that's not just something we're seeing in our young people, but we're seeing that in adults and sometimes leaders, um, whatever position they may see, uh, that we're seeing that more and more. And um, and often in school, we're seeing this in, in settings that are sometimes characterized as social settings or kids, kids may say, these are my friends and these are just people that I'm comfortable with. And this is how we talk to one another and not really understand the context, the severity of the words you're saying, the ramifications, the hurtfulness, and just the perceptions that it brings upon us. And uh, I truly believe we've got good kids. We've got good kids across the board. We've got good kids who make poor choices. We've got good adults who make poor choices. And you know our 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 obligation is to make sure that we're we're holding people accountable. But we're also taking time to, to educate them. And you know I just want to be upfront is in these these comments, um, especially those that are made towards students of color, um, can be perceived as being racist. And that's not something I ever want um, us to have the reputation because I truly don't understand that is is appropriate. I think rightfully so. When these things are said, I mean, I totally get it. And, and I understand that, and, and justifiably so that these things are looked upon as being racist. But in my 26 plus years in education, working with a variety of students all the way from five years old in kindergarten to, you know, most of my career has been in middle school, but now I get to work with students um, up to 18 years old. I've never met a student, whether it's seven years old, 10 years old, 12 year old, 16 year old, who I would ever characterize being racist. Because I believe to be racist, you, you've got, there, there's a sense of hatred. Um, within you and uh, towards another human being for whatever reason. And I just don't think our students have developed um, that at this point in their young age. And it doesn't mean that what they're doing is appropriate or right, but um, to be characterized as racist, you got to be careful about that. The behavior and comment definitely can be characterized as such, but as individuals, I don't think our students are in that place. And I'm not saying there aren't those type of people in our world, because we definitely know there are, but we're working with kids who are developing and growing. And what I do believe is what our experiences that our kids are being exposed to, they're exposed to various words and images and attitudes through, once again, I said television, through video games, social media, um, things that are being modeled by adults, maybe through the music that they listen to. And our students, remember, their brains are developing and all this that's coming to them on a daily basis. Once again, technology is, is a love-hate relationship because it's a great tool but it feeds a lot of things into our, our, our ch children's brains that aren't healthy and it's negative. 
and our kids will model what they see and hear, especially from the adults around them. And it could be through a video screen. It could be through people talking through a headset and video games. And trust me, I've heard enough to know what's being said in that environment that our kids will then model without any any forethought what they hear and see in school. And we have to respond to that. And not only do we respond to that, we do hold them accountable. I believe accountability is a tool um, for learning and for growth for kids and for adults, but also it's an opportunity for education because if we don't spend time educating our kids, um, they're going to be put in a position where they're really going to, to lose opportunities down the road and hurt other people down the road. And so that is the balancing act that we have to have is a level of accountability, but also more importantly of education. And that's what we're committed to doing um, before we do send them out and they're 18 years old and they go to college or they go fight for our, our nation in the military, or they're going to go uh, pursue a career in a trade that they're going to work with a diverse um, community of people, regardless of what environment they're in. And we have to understand that um, we're all different and diversity is a strength and we have to understand each other, but we have to understand the power of the words, what we say, because everything we do and we say matters um, and it has an impact. And even sometimes what we don't say matters and sends a message. And so we, this is a great community. Um, I love having my kids live here, go to school here. I know you do as well. That's why you've made the same choices that I've made. And um, with that being said, excuse me, something just popped up on my screen. I'm going to get rid of that really quick. Um, with that being said, um, I want to make sure that we are the shining beacon of light um, to those around us. We can't control a lot of what our kids are exposed to in the world. You know, things are just going to happen. And uh, we do have some control. But what we what we can focus on is who we are, what makes being a Pinkney Pirate so special and unique, what separates us from those around us, and why... Um, you know, there is a, a strong sense of community here, strong, a strong sense of unity and pride. And we have to maximize that and we have to utilize that and understand that we're all here for the same reason. And that's just because we want our kids to be successful in school and we want them to be happy. We want them to be safe. And we want to live in an environment, a community that provides that. And I think we do. Um, we're not perfect by any means. We have challenges along the way. We have differences. We have, you know, whether it's our religious beliefs, it's our political beliefs, or it's just our philosophical life beliefs. Um, we understand that um, we're all going to think alike, but I think what we do um, have common ground on is we all want the best for our kids. And uh, there's some simple ways that we can we can all try to obtain that. And that's just always making sure we're respectful, that we're, we understand the power of our words and um, kindness uh carries carries a lot of weight and uh you know, accountability forgiveness um understanding also carries a lot of weight and and that's what we want to focus on and uh, working together is is the power that we have and i believe through messages like this that we we continue to be transparent we work together we understand one another um doesn't mean that we're not going to get upset we're not going to get angry we're not going to get hurt and disappointed because those things are going to happen um but we're gonna we're we're never going to negate the the seriousness of of words that our, our kids use or the adults use, and then but then once again, how do we grow and learn, and how do we become better people? Because um, that's our goal, and and our kids are, are why we're here. So on that note, I want to end on a positive note because I know that was you know something that um, is not always easy here, but I think we have to hear it, and uh, I do want to use my experience that what I see and hear from my chair to help bring you along with us because you need to be part of this journey and I need you. Um, I can't do it by myself. Our teachers can't do it by ourselves. Our administrators can't do it ourselves. It is our kids need all of us and we all have to be all in um, because they're worth it. And uh, our society and our community is worth it. So, so thank you once again for being part of our pirate family. Uh, I'm extremely encouraged and excited about the school year. Uh, once again, I get to work in an environment with adults who truly love kids and they do and we're going to make mistakes and and we're going to i'm committed to you to that we're going to learn we're going to we're going to reflect and and you know if we need to make things right we're going to make it right um but uh, this is this is a unique profession and uh i'm privileged to be part of it i'm glad that you're along um with us on this journey and uh because we're going to work together and, and uh we're going to we're going to show why this community is special why this school district special and it's because of your children and because of you and because of the staff and the adults we have working with them. So on that note, thank you so much for investing the time and energy in this message. Um, I hopefully be able to have an opportunity to meet you personally if I already haven't done so. And um, as always, um, this is a great place. Pirate family, um, you are strong, you are special, and uh, this is going to be an exciting school year. So have a great weekend, holiday, week, holiday weekend, enjoy your four days, 
And we'll see you back here on Tuesday. Go Pirates!